is Nancy Beaton. I'm vice president of uh, MVU and Cadre, which is the blockchain arm of MVU, and it has recently launched Vcoin. Yeah, so Vcoin is all about unleashing the peer-to-peer -peer economy in the metaverse. It's designed for the metaverse. It is designed to allow for safe, easy, and very quick transactions between users in the metaverse. You know, we at MVU have a very high velocity economy. So we have a virtual goods economy, like a lot of folks, you can come in and buy hats and shoes and furniture, um, just like others in the, in the gaming space. But unlike others that might be single purchase economies, I go in and I buy um, a skin or a gun, that purchase is completed. At MVU, we also have a service side economy where we see a lot of activity between our users globally. They're gifting, they're paying for services, they're paying for entry into nightclubs, they're paying DJs to you know, host that nightclub. And so Vcoin was really created to unleash that service side of the economy and allow for safe and fast transactions between users on the platform. And your platform supports all cryptocurrencies, correct? Like that's part of the, the, the beauty of it, whether it's Dogecoin or anything like that, like it, it'll translate the value. How does it assess the value? Because all these cryptocurrencies are assessed at a slightly different value. So actually it's the reverse. So our platform has traditional game credits like other gaming platforms or social platforms, and it supports Vcoin right now. But Vcoin can be taken off the platform. It's the first um, cryptocurrency to receive a no action letter that's actually in market. And it can be transferred off the platform into an external wallet. And from there it can be converted to fiat or users can do what they want with it. So we don't have other cryptocurrencies on our platform yet, but we are looking at expanding other cryptocurrencies for our users that will be in our platform soon. Do you think that cryptocurrency in general, whether it's yours, whether it's Vcoin or other, other ones, um, could help the future in in-game transactions? Do you think that's the way it's going to go? Yeah, I think users want to um, participate with each other in these metaverses and across metaverses. So to be able to have a secure way to do that using crypto, I think is something they're really looking for. Today, they're stuck with game credits that have no value off the platform. But, you know, people are really investing their time. They're becoming creators. They're becoming people who build experiences and they want to earn value for that and exchange that value for fiat, for other cryptocurrencies or take that into other metaverses. Versus. So today, the you know unscalable and kind of locked nature of game credits just doesn't allow for that. So that's where I think cryptocurrency will come and play. And I think people will start adopting it as they want to exchange in the metaverse and among metaverses as well. Yeah, because right now, like currently for some of the largest games, it's both a financial and a marketing strategy to always sell their, to always price point their, their microtransactions in weird numbers. So you always have something left over that's not quite enough to buy something. It's almost like it's a strategy with the, and with your platform, it sounds like it's, you could use that and transfer it somewhere else and actually put it toward a di completely different platform because it is cryptocurrency and not a V-Buck or a Emerald Shard or whatever the premium currency is called in these free to play exactly. games. That's exactly right. And for the first time people can earn in the game and take it off the platform and get real money for that, that they can use in the real world. And that's meaningful to people who spend their time and have their social connections in these metaverses. How can a company like utilize your platform and the strategy with if they already have like a, a microtransaction fake currency in place? Yeah, so they could adopt a lot of what we've done. Obviously, we've gone through the process of getting a no action letter from the SEC which is really important because we have a global user base. And if you know, in the metaverse, people want to connect globally. They don't want to be tripped up or challenged or blocked because it's available here, it's not available here. So it was really important for us to come out with sort of a globally compliant um, cryptocurrency. And so others can, you know, work with us. And we have some partners that are in place like Exala. It's one of the largest payment processors for other games. We have a letter of intent with them where they're going to start allowing Vcoin to be payment for other game platform credits. So we can integrate Vcoin into other games or we can help them through that path. Like we brought Vcoin to market and can transfer it off the platform. As, as the VP of strategy, like how do you see cryptocurrency just in general? Because right now we're kind of in the wild, wild west where there's a lot of different ones and all of them are valued differently. And some people take them and some people don't. Like we're kind of in that point, we're in that very not necessarily dangerous but interesting transitional period um i use the us dollars a good example is you know it was 
it used to be that a dollar, which was just obviously a piece of paper, was backed up by gold in the Federal Reserve. And that was your, you know, your interpretation of that. That's been long gone forever now. And now people don't realize that <clears throat> as a society, we value anything that people will take as a currency. So do you think that cryptocurrency is here to stay? Do you think it will continue to evolve? Do you think eventually we'll decide of like one kind of cryptocurrency to rule them all in a way? Yeah, I, I don't know if there'll be one ruler overall, but I do think it's here to stay. I think that the adoption over the next five years will really get into the mass market. I think what you've seen to date, even in the space of social connection and games, is that people have gone after the heavy crypto crowd and they may not have the best experience, they may not have the broadest user base, they may not have the best game or social platform. And I think what you're seeing us do is we have 7 million monthly active users, a million daily active users, and we're bringing crypto into them in a really smooth, seamless, frictionless way where they can easily participate in microtransactions, trust it, and earn real money off of it, which is important to them. So, you know, I think you will see fluctuation in cryptocurrency and in the markets for some time, but, <coughs> excuse me, but I do think that you will see mass adoption, especially as, you know, platforms like Envy, which is, you know, a sustaining long-term platform, brings crypto into its marketplace. Do you feel that it's uh, as as generations, younger generations get older, they've just become more accepting of non-physical val uh, valuables? Like, I mean, I'm a collector, as you can see from the back wall, I've collected things for years, but we're now we're getting to the point where there are like NFTs, which are essentially the same thing, but digital. <coughs> Do you feel like uh, uh, as the generations, as the younger generations, like Gen Z and Gen Y get older, that they're just becoming more accepting of having a currency that's not backed up by anything or owning something that's purely digital, like actually owning it via, you know, a license or whatever, aside from like, you know, an action figure or like a five, one in 500 in numbered uh, statue. Yeah, I do. You know, I think it's not just collectibles. I think it's the whole idea of value. So if you think about the new economy, especially in the metaverse, but if you think about this generation and the way they approach the economy, it's not like generations before. I mean, they're not looking to be at a 20 year job waiting for a 401k to vest. You know, they're actively trying to manage and control their earnings and get those earnings to return for them faster. And so we see the economy in general becoming more of a creator earner economy. You know, they say the individual is the new retailer and I believe that. And I think there's a lot of people investing their time in games and metaverses and other things that you're seeing that they wanna take control over their time, over their earnings, over their goods. And I do think that they're more apt to be, you know, willing to see a digital collectible as value. You know, it, you know, they don't have to have a bank. They have a mobile bank. They, you know, they don't have to have a physical good. They can have a collectible digital good. And I think it's very easy for them, especially because I think the whole economy around them with influencers and others has become very digital. Do you feel that NFTs could be used in the future for in-game collectibles in certain platforms and cases? Absolutely. If you look at MG right now, we have a virtual goods store that has about 50 million goods. We have 100,000 creators uploading six to 10,000 a day. Um, what they want though, is they want exclusivity, they want trackability, they want to earn off of the resale. You know, they want to be able to have limited editions. And so these are all things that NFTs can bring to the platform. And you know, right now I think we see NFTs being hot commodities and collectibles. So people are paying thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars for these collectibles based upon the speculation that they'll appreciate. But I think as you move from a, you know, a collectible view of an NFT to a utility view of an NFT, you'll start to see that people want to pay extra for this exclusivity or for the resale value. They might not want to pay, you know, a hundred thousand dollars for the extra, but maybe instead of paying five dollars, they'll pay fifteen dollars. And, you know, I think that's when you'll start to see this mass adoption of NFTs because they still value the inherent value of an NFT, um, but you'll see volume of transactions of these NFTs just grow and grow and grow, where I think you'll have still the collectibles, but it'll be fewer and far between. You know, as a VP of strategy, what's, uh, what's one of the hardest things about your job? Like, for example, I, I don't want to say what's the word I'm looking for. 
um, maybe sensitive or even volatile in cryptocurrencies because someone like Elon Musk or, uh, you know, even like, you know, maybe the president will say something and then the whole market reacts, especially the cryptocurrency market. See, like Elon Musk can single handedly double the value of a cryptocurrency just by mentioning something on Twitter. Is that hard for you to try to synergize with that and try to figure out how to swing that strategy to your company's advantage? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think just the general reputation right now of cryptocurrency, it seems very hard to understand for the mass user base that we have. It also seems that it can swing wildly and that, you know, it's very sensational. So I think, you know, we have to continue to tell our users that the way we've structured Vcoin and the way we'll structure other crypto is it's very secure, it's very safe, it's very easy to use. Um, so that they can participate in the market as well and not just see it as some wild west right now that's out there with people who can tweet and, you know, jump the value of some sort of token. I think the other thing that's been really interesting is, you know, I've built businesses before, but in the crypto space, it's almost as though the market is being built while we're bu building the business. And so it changes every day. Regulatory landscapes change every day. Money licensing changes every day. The SEC comes out with something else every day. Different countries are different every day. The legal around it. So I think that's been really interesting as you know we're building the actual business around this, that we're doing it in an environment that changes every day as well. So we had to be really nimble and try to navigate those waters while we're doing sort of a really easy, simple, frictionless you know user experience on the platform. Yeah, I almost like to compare it to, and I forget which country which, which country did it first, but when when gold and emeralds started to be slowly become the, tra the the currency, before then you would just trade a pie for a rabbit, or you know, like a pelt for you know a, a for a piece of you know cake or whatever. Like it was a it was a goods trading system, and then eventually they made you know they decided that gold and rubies or these minerals would be their you know united currency, and that's what you would use, and it would gauge and everything is history from there. Um, I feel like we're in that same situation right now where we're, we're, we're getting, you know, you're getting the hang with Vcoin and, and Deutschcoin and um, Bitcoin and all this stuff. And we're trying to figure out exactly what works, but maybe we're maybe advanced enough to where we can have like multiple currencies now before it was just like, nope, it was like golden gems and that was it. You know, man, like, you know, variations of the golden gems. But like, where do you see Bitcoin in the future? Do you think we'll eventually, like eventually just phase out the American dollar or the Euro or whatnot and just have cryptocurrencies as the future currency for our planet essentially i feel like you know cryptocurrency will become more dominant and more and more widely accepted you know i mean i open my venmo app i can buy crypto now you know so i see that you know there's there is definitely a path where cryptocurrency will be more widely held purchased by more users directly um, you know, uh, exchanged by average people or monitored by average people. So I do see the user base moving out into the mass market. And I do feel like there's a lot of folks, if you look globally, even outside the U.S., that probably need a trusted currency more than their country can provide right now. So I do feel like there's definitely a role where it becomes bigger and bigger into the mass market. I also do feel like though, there are certain cryptocurrencies designed for very specific things. So, you know, I don't know if, you know, one person would be smart to have one crypto because you might want to have, you know, tokens at a DeFi platform just for, you know, interest bearing and, you know, investment. You might want to have tokens in your metaverse gaming platform because they have very specific benefits for you in that platform. So I kind of sort of see it like a portfolio like you might have with your other finances. Maybe you carry different credit cards because they give you different benefits. I think, you know, the smart and the most successful crypto will be designed for its use cases and people will still have a wallet full of a portfolio. But I think more people will have wallets, more people will have crypto and more people will get in the game for sure. I think it also like it also it also varies drastically on what who accepts what type of crypto as a form of currency currently, you know, whether it's Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Vcoin, like if they, if they accept it, the more people that accept multiple forms of cryptocurrency, the more wildly adopted it will be and more success successful it will be. That's right. And, you know, we launched actually a debit card. So now if you earn Bitcoin on our platform, you can exit the platform and you have a debit card. I can go to Starbucks, I can buy lunch and it just takes it right out of my Bitcoin account. So to your point, it's accepted in everywhere, you know, MasterCard debit card is accepted. 
And so, you know, it makes it really easy for people to see the value in the real world when they swipe that. You know, I mean, most of these people are pretty educated in, in these things, like, you know, investors and uh, higher upper class people like CEOs and executives, like they, they know how they understand the crowd cryptocurrency words, but say like you have an investor or someone who's interested in your platform and they have no idea how crypto works. Can you very explain to them, like very simply explain to them, like what, you know, your platform does and how it works specifically with Vcoin and like that kind of stuff, like give me your elevator pitch basically. Sure, and I would tell you, this is what we do to our users on our platform. We are not a heavy crypto-based platform, so the education rail has been one that we've been working on really hard. But I would say to anyone, you know, Vcoin is a globally transferable token, and on our platform, people can buy, gift, earn, and hold Vcoin. And anyone now on the platform becomes an earner. Because when you have Vcoin in your wallet, you have real money in your wallet. And so you can take that Vcoin off the platform, convert it to cash, and spend it in the real world. Is it, like you said, mentioned that like crypto is a global, a global currency. Is it difficult looking at all the different exchange rates? So much, like, much like the US dollar or anything else, when you go somewhere, there's going to be a power. Well, we're, we're a US press site, so I'll stick to the US. Like, you know, it used for the, uh, for the pound, it used to be two to one, and now I think it's 1.5 to one. Uh, with uh, Vcoin and other cryptos, I, it's got to be doing this consistently all the time, like uh, up and down mainly because like we mentioned before, when someone like Elon Musk says something and it skyrockets or this person says something and it bottoms out, uh, is that just the nature of it currently? Do you think it'll eventually level out? I think that's the nature of a lot of crypto that's, you know, based upon speculation. And so I think that, you know, people are getting into it for the, you know, the highs, high, ideally. Um, I think Vcoin's a little bit different. Um, in order to secure the no action letter, it has a consistent buy price and buy back price. So while it's not a stable coin, it is very stable in its price. So we don't see the high fluctuations around that. And that's what's gotten our users to adopt it quicker because they know that if I buy it, I can, you know, exchange it for similar price minus a transaction fee. Now, the other currencies we're coming out with, to your point, they will be, you know, tokens that, you know, could have appreciation or depreciation and will allow people to have more of a voice in the creation of the next metaverse economy. Um, but Bitcoin right now it has that kind of stable, consistent pricing. And I think that's why we've gotten um, adoption around it initially. Yeah, I mean, like it's difficult. I think the current value, and I was before the interview, and I was looking at, is it, like zero point oh oh two four five cents on the dollar, something like that. I don't, I, I know, I know that changes every minute of every day, but that when I looked at, that's what I, that's what. Yeah. I thought. So for Bitcoin, it's you can buy two hundred fifty Bitcoin for a dollar. Yeah. So that's about right. Yeah. It's about two fifty yeah. five. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's right. Yeah, and so it's a superior type of currency on our platform. Um, it's better than credits because you can exchange it back for money, for real money. So, you know, for the first time ever, you come into a game platform, you buy the currency on the platform, you can take it with you. So, you know, people know that once they have it in their pocket, it's like real cash. Yeah, I mean, unlike, unlike so many other platforms that have whatever fake currency that they have, like I just see Fortnite's the biggest game in the world, so V-Bucks is a great example. Like there's no inherent value to a V-Buck you know, other than what the value of the card was. I can't, I can't tell you how many cards you, you see on sale, for trade, sale or trade pages that were $50, they want to get rid of them for 25 or 20 yeah. or 10, whatever. You know what I mean? Because they have no inherent value because you can only spend it in the Fortnite store on Fortnite things. And that's where it ends, where your metaverse is has just a plethora of options to go for from there. That's exactly right. It turns every user into an earner and every earner can cash out for, cash, for fiat. How, I mean, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier in the interview, but like, is it difficult approaching large companies like Activision or Blizzard, these these huge multi-billion gaming companies that have these uh, marketing strategies in place and say, you really should switch to this when the, you know, when like, is it difficult trying to persuade them or trying to explain to them why this is better for everyone in the long run? You know, I, uh, I believe every large gaming social connection platform is looking into crypto. I mean, there we know, you know, all the players in the space and everybody has teams that are looking at this. You know, I think I, I hear a lot that the NFT play is going to be a lot of people's first, you know, um, jump into this because the crypto regulation is really tough to kind of navigate. 
So I think a lot of people might start with NFTs, but you know, I do feel like everybody's going to get in the game. I do feel like, you know, we do connect with everybody in the space. And, you know, I think that um, people are interested in what we are doing and, you know, do want to partner with us or to think about that in that space. Um, just like Exala, you know, who is the largest payment platform, working with them to make Bitcoin payment. And they power, you know, 3,500 games across the country. Other people like Tapjoy, it's an earned offer um, company. And, you know, they let people earn game credits or other things for watching videos or taking surveys and they want to participate in Bitcoin. So I think there's a lot that um, people are looking at in this space. And I think you'll see more and more people get into it quickly. Like I mentioned before, because, you know, the the, the cryptocurrency is currently really um, sensitive. I'll use the word sensitive. Um, are, you, are you able, is Metaverse able to shift, uh, you know, to Bitcoin, to Dogecoin, to Bitcoin to whatever coin comes next, if that seems to be the what everyone wants to use, like the more popular uh, cryptocurrency? I think, you know, we will have uh, cryptocurrencies that offer different benefits, you know, that, you know, are more like traditional cryptocurrencies. I think, you know, we had to offer Bitcoin first because of that global uh, interaction amongst our users. And so, you know, we would not necessarily um, put in a new crypto and take out Bitcoin because it wouldn't have the same usage as a Bitcoin. Because you can't trade it everywhere internationally. You know, you can't, you have to KYC before you can even purchase it. Um, for Bitcoin, you can just purchase Bitcoin. You don't have to KYC until you leave the platform. And so we have a lot of users that may not KYC, may not be 18. So. We really needed something that everybody could touch and earn and gift and hold. And a lot of those other cryptos just don't do that for us right now. But we will come out with other cryptocurrencies that seem to have benefits of what I would call a traditional token on exchange. Accessibility is basically what you're trying to do. And that's very important when you're trying yes. to get people to understand and work with uh, currencies. It's part of the reason I think um, there's a crowdfunding platform called FIG. Mm -hmm. um, and not a lot of people utilize it. But it's really interesting because they have like it's 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 about investing and getting return on investments, but it's so much more complicated and intimidating than Kickstarter, where it's like here, just take my five dollars and I get this. Where Fig, it's much more complicated than that. So and people can get intimidated and scared. And I think even with NFTs and cryptocurrencies, people are still a little intimidated and scared because they're not quite sure what to make of them. But again, it's because we're in that that weird transitional uh, state. Uh, you know, and it's and I don't envy you because your job must be very hard because if you had, if everyone knew what was going to go, you'd be a millionaire. You know what I mean? That's the point. But we don't know because we have to learn as we go and take it one one day or one month or one quarter at a time. That's exactly right. And, you know, the way that we approached it was we do not have complicated um, crypto wallets. We don't force KYC to buy a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. And so we made the whole process very frictionless and it's seamlessly integrated into the way they use our game credits today. And so that's why I think we can get adoption around this. Um, you know, if we had all those hurdles that, you know, I have to write down my 12 key words and, you know, create some MetaMask wallet, the adoption on our platform for the mass user base would not be as high as it is today. Is the company that owns Metaverse, is, is it publicly traded? Or are you guys currently a private IPO at the moment? Um, yeah, currently it's a private company. It's called Together Labs and they own um, InView, which is one platform. They obviously own all of the work we're doing in the blockchain space and they have other, um, I'll say, titles or platforms in the works as well. Awesome. Where can people find more information about Vcoin and your platform in general? Where can they go? Yeah, so to find more information about Vcoin, you can go to therealvcoin.com and it has everything on there you would want to know. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. We have a Discord channel. Um, and for MView, you can go to mview.com and you can register and start buying Bitcoin today.